Welcome to the Steve Show. Today I have Lee Purcell here, and we I, I got to meet him in the Amazon when I was in a group uh, mastermind. And I want you to know uh, today we're talking about mindset. Today we're going to talk about what stops us, where are the opportunities of this. So let's jump into mindset. Yeah. So you know. You know, Lee, I'm so happy you're on the show. First, I'm like grateful that you're here. And the second part is like, I think, you know, so many of us, we think that um, when we get somewhere, when we get to a certain place or when we achieve a certain goal or when our business does something or, you know, when we meet our career goals, that then it'll be different. <laughs> that then the change will happen. And I think that we find and I think you and I both agree that really we have to change to have that. Absolutely. I mean, Deepak Chopra, I think it was, that said, um, be happy for no reason. Because if you're happy for a reason, that reason can be taken away from you. And a lot of times we're, we're living in a state of chasing because um, we identify with the mind so much. We identify with the ego. And um, whenever I feel that this is going to make me happy or this is going to make me happy, I seem to get that. It, it's going to make me happy. It's not making me happy right now. You know, when I, even, even with fears and stuff, I, I live in states of like dwelling on things or I, I, I'm afraid that this is going to turn out this way when I'm, I'm afraid of suffering. I'm afraid of suffering in the future, but when I'm living in fear, I'm afraid of suffering right now. Like, and I'm actually suffering right now. Right. And, and, and plus, because the mind doesn't know the difference in time. Exactly. Right. So when you think of something in the future, it's like thinking about it now as well. Yeah. Or in the past, if you're dwelling on something that happened to you and you're upset about it, then it's still occurring now in your mind. Which makes it to me like such a cosmic joke, because the only thing that's happening right now is this moment. Everything right. else is that like electrical pulse in the brain. And <laughs> it just makes me laugh because um, when... When I identify with the mind, first of all, I see a lot of patterns within human beings, myself included. I, I wanted to eliminate the ego. I wanted to eliminate the mind from the whole equation. And I think we got it wrong because um, we want to enter the heart space. We want to enter the moment or right now, or some people call it spirit. Some people call it God, you know, whatever word we want to use for right now, you know. And um, we need to remember to... Um, utilize the mind as not the captain of the ship you know we, we've, we've we've let this thing lead the course and now we just want to get rid of it when it's creative like look look at life that life is creation that, that that comes from the mind that comes from something beyond the mind but it starts with the mind and when we learn to lead with our hearts and back it up with our minds i believe that's where we find those states of balance that we're looking for Right, yeah, it's a, it's both. It's exactly. Right? You can't have one or the other. We're most, saying, yeah, yeah, we're most people when they start like a spiritual path or they start waking up, it's like, oh, get rid of the ego. Oh, that's ego. Oh, that's all ego. Well, the ego's not a bad thing. I mean, one of Tony Robbins' books, he was explaining how Mother Teresa had an ego. Like, she feels good when she's helping people. That doesn't mean she's a bad person, you know? Right. Where so many of us, like, like I said, we're just racing and like getting rid of the ego and it's, it's so funny i did 200 percent, i did and, and now i'm learning to um, find that balance within my mind but lead with my heart lead with the feeling because once we trust our gut once we trust our feelings everything seems to work out yeah right <laughs> it's it's kind of trust and you know like when we think about business and so many people get into this you get into your career you start a company then you start to try to think logical like there's even books in there there's like when it comes to consumer level it's emotional when it comes to business level it's uh it's logical and i, I disagree like you know i think that you know everything's emotional everything connects back to that but i guess my you know when you i guess here's what i'm getting at is these decisions are being made and we're doing it so much on logic that we lose sight of our emotional like that gut feeling that mm -hmm. people talk about right so maybe talk a little bit about how you've utilized because I, I, the other, I guess the, the, the add to this is that we're all intuitive in a way. Like you don't have to be like a, a wizard or whatever people think that it is. But if you want to be a wizard, that's cool too. But <laughs> but the fact is is that how can we all tap into our intuition or listen to ourselves? Like how do you listen to yourself more? I I call it spiritual push-ups. This is something I created on my own. Um, and the reference point I use is. Um, if I want to get in better shape. I mean, three years ago, I was 240 pounds, I had a big belly out to here. The only reason I'm in better shape is because I practiced. I, I, I worked out, I, I ate healthy, I, I, I put all these things into account. 
And if I want to strengthen my, my intuition, I need to practice it. So what I teach people, I'll tell them, um, go for a walk and just start. Literally go left or right. And whatever comes first, just go. Go left. If you, if you feel left, just go and see what happens, you know. Right. I mean, just see what happens and, and assess it. And analytically use the mind to back that up now. Now assess it logically. Okay, so this happened when I did this. And then see how many times it really works out. If it works out more times than less, then to me that's intuition. And you're, you, now you're learning to analytically identify your own intuition. And you're teaching yourself how to strengthen that intuition. And this, so if it, this all can be applied logically. So if there's people that don't believe it, well, that's fine. But you probably haven't practiced it to see the experience. And you're just judging an experience that you haven't really made, you know, made right. effort. In. No try at all, right? Yeah. It just doesn't exist. It's like when you're talking to your kids and they're like, I don't like broccoli. And you're like, you didn't even try it. <laughs> that's it. Right? <laughs> you take a bite and then tell me that you don't like it. If you take two bites and you don't like it still, then we'll, you can stop eating it. It's like getting people to try. That's it, you know? It. And it can all be broken down scientifically, like quantum, like we're all vibrations, we're all vibrating, that's proven in science. And magnetically, we attract, you know, like it's like magnets. We attract our outside world from our inside perspective. And give it a try. <laughs> right. I know my wife took a uh, intuition class and they, the first thing they taught was to write things down. Like, so if you're like, if you meditate or what, whatever you're doing, if you're, if you're having these thoughts, write them down because then, you know, you look at it a day later, two days later, a week later and you're like, Oh my gosh, I knew. And I've been doing this more now and I've been with clients and I actually write something down and then the client says it right after I write it down. Like, I'm like, wow, like I felt it because I was listening. And those would have been things that I would have said, nah, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. weird stuff, woo woo. Like, you know, but I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, wow, no, this is happening. And the more that it's happening, I'm, I'm, um, and what's happened now is that I'm making decisions in a much more congruent way for myself and I could see the results. So, like you're saying, checks and balances. So, I had a group of guys come to me with an offering, and one of the guys is a billionaire. And, you know, I've been around a few billionaires and that goes, but they came to me and they wanted me to be a partner in the business and I got an immediate no. And then in my mind, I'm like, oh, but this and that, and who, how many times have you ever gotten an opportunity to work with, uh, directly with a billionaire and be a partner? Like never. So I'm like, yes, yes, yes. on all these other things. But I already made a commitment to myself before this happened, like months before, I was like, I'm going to take the first answer. Like you said, left or right. And it's like left shows up. And when I'm asking myself these yes or no's, I went with the no. Yeah. And um, it turns out the whole company was a complete mess. I think they're going to figure it out, but all of them are working way harder. And now it makes sense to me because yeah. my whole mission right now is to be with my family, to be with my kids. And so I don't want a business that's going to take my affairs outside of the house where I'm like working way harder. It did not work the way that they expected. So my intuition was correct. It served me. If I would have said yes, I would have been, I would be in a whole world when we might not even be sitting here talking right now because I would be working on something else. Wow. And analytically, like you've made money and now you're learning to refine that picture within yourself. Like how to, how do I make money within my own expression now? Because like yeah, anybody so can make money. Ways, right? Yeah. And like, is it money? Is, is that the end goal? I mean, yeah. I talked to so many people that, you know, like business oriented that are making money and they, um, the same thing, exactly that. You know, it's a lot of them aren't happy if they aren't doing it in the way that best suits them. And once you find that balance within yourself, which is you are, you know what I mean? You're finding that. You get to have all that family life and you're enjoying it. And I see that and it's inspiring, you know? And then take that one account that you just had with that business guy and um, analytically looking at it, wow, you made a good call. Right. You made a good call based on feel. Right. And there's no logic to explain it at first, but if you do that 10 times, and it works out eight or even 10 times. If it works out every single time, how can you deny that? That's right. science. That's a study. You're, you're, that's an observation. And majority of the time it's working out. So right. like that's intuition. Like right. it, it can be explained so logically and so simply. Right. Yeah. I call, yeah. I call life so much simplicity within so much complexity because for me anyways, I've personally found the most like the craziest, most profound things that I've ever been searching for have been the simplest of all. Do you agree? Uh, absolutely. I mean, uh, I, it's life and business is so simple. 
you know, we become delusional. <laughs> like, you know, um, and when I heard this first said in this way, because I was already in this simple, but uh, Marco Robert, another guy that I've, I've done work with, he's another consultant, and he always says, you know, we're delusional, I'm delusional, you're delusional, business is simple. Like, we complicate it. We make it more complicated. Like, it is just given to us in the right way, and if you follow, and that's this is where those intuitions come in, if you follow those intuitions, it can be smooth sailing. It, it really can. I mean, and there's lessons to be learned. Is it going to be like piece of cake all the time? No, you know, some things we're going to bump and grind. And, you know, those are lessons that we need to learn. And you know where I bumped and grinded the most? When I wasn't listening to my intuition. Yes. So there's still bumps, but they're way less. It's like, wow, it's so easy. And, you know, now I'm questioning, like, is it that did I properly listen to my intuition? Is like if I'm properly listening to my intuition, are there no bumps? You know, like it's. And then once you learn those things, then you can maybe move past it. But I find that the more I'm in alignment with whatever you want to call it, your gut feeling, yeah. your intuition, um, that first reaction that happens, the smoother it is. And the funny part is when you, when you don't trust it and then you get lost in your mind, like for me anyways, like if I don't trust my intuition and I make a different decision... And then, I, then I, initially I would catch myself judging myself and I'm like, oh my God, I've lost my intuition. I've lost that trust. I've lost that connection. Ah. Right. And, then, and then you fall into this mental loop of self-judgment and you work through that and you realize, oh, life is simple again. You know, it's like, for me, it's the same lesson over and over in different layers of trust. And like you said, it, it happens less and less and less. And that's the cool thing. Like stepping on this path, you're learning to trust it more to the point where I believe you don't even have to practice it. You know what I mean? Like it just, it just happens. That's what the speed of it. And I, and I, I feel like I'm going towards the next level, but some of it's like instantaneous. Oh God. Like, I mean, just like, um, it's, it's so amazing. Like how you can make decisions faster. Where like something like a big decision, like even that business decision, I might've taken weeks mm -hmm. to decide, should I do business with these billionaires or do or not? You know, like yeah. what is it? And then to have, uh, this decision come to me like in the first ask like do i want should i do this no boom done and it works out yeah and, and then to see the results how does it make you feel amazing and that uh life's easier because like you were saying is money the end you know usually like money is a tool it's not a destination either just like happiness like we were saying you know um you know, to choose to be happy, to choose to have the feeling. And the same with money. Uh, money is just a tool. It, it gives us more options. You know, for me, can I make more business? Can I build my business faster right now? Yes. Is it, is it going to, but am I going to do that and sacrifice to my kids? Right now I have young kids and I want to spend, as you know, I want to spend time with them. So I'm willing to make those things. And you know, here's the crazy thing. When I made that decision and I finally like was willing to slow down on business, do you know, I've actually made more money <laughs> in less time, <laughs> in I, less time. I can relate this like to, um, I got up to 212 pushups, 212 and I was in so, one time. so proud of myself, 212 in a row. Now. Through that, I've learned to do 10 really nice ones. And it's more effective. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, you're just talking well yeah, amount. Boom, 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 yeah. boom, done, boom, boom, done. And it, like, you're, you, the way you're describing, you're, you're creating a life. Yeah. You're not creating a business anymore. You're creating a whole life, and business is just one part of that life. You know, and, and I, you, I love that you just said that because that's what I say all the time. Is that <laughs> how, how can I, like, people are like, oh, you're a life coach, you're a business coach, you're a life coach, you're a business coach. No, I'm both. Yeah. Like, how can you separate it? Like, you, when you're in your business, that is your life. When you're with your family, that is your life. This is all your life. Yes. Right? And, yeah. you know, so many people, and I say this all the time, it's so worth repeating here, is that so many people, like, think that, okay, I'm going to, I have to do this business and then I'll fit my life in around that. And I want to say no. Like, build your life, design the life you want, and then fit your work around that. And what I love is, like, when you're saying this, you're not saying this because you read it in a book. You're not saying this because you watched it somewhere. You're saying this because you experienced it. Right. Because you experienced it. You're like, this is what I've gone through and this is what I've learned. And there's many others that can vouch and say the same thing. <laughs> right. We chased this. We went in this direction. And now we learned, wow, it's not just about this. It's about the whole spectrum. I can have a piece of the pie or I can have this pie. What do I want? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. You can have the piece of the pie and the whole pie. <laughs> right. It's... um. It's so uh, amazing because we already, you know, the thing two people say, oh, you can't do that. Well, I'm like, well, you already are. You're doing your business and you're fitting your life in. So you already, you already know how to fit things in. Wow. Right? So then why don't you design your life and then fit your work in? And how's that worked for you? Yeah. 
I mean, for me, it's worked tremendously. And even teaching it, it's worked amazingly. Like people, I, I've had people come in and they had one woman, she hadn't seen her uh, twin sister in over a year and she wasn't going to be able to see her for almost another year. It was going to be like well into uh, the following year. And just by being there and changing her perspective and saying, no, you own your calendar. You own your calendar. Like, and she has her own business. Like, I like how can you not move your clients around? Like, how can you not tell them, you know what, I'm going to, I'm, I'm gone that week. Let's do next week. That's interesting. Like, like, like people feel like they're slaves to their business and what they do. And to take that power back is empowering because you do own your calendar. And that, that brings me to the concept, whole concept of time. You know, everyone's measuring time as, um, as an increment of age. And it got brought to my attention maybe like a year ago to start using time as a measurement of progress. So within six months, how much have I gained? And in doing so, I feel younger. I literally feel younger. People are afraid to get older. I'm almost 30 and I'm excited. Right. I'm excited to turn 30. Right. Like I've talked to a lot of people who are like, oh my God, I'm turning 30. Ah, oh. you know, and I'm like, what? Yes, I'm turning right? 30. Going into it. I'm getting yeah. wiser and younger every day. Right, and that's what I was just going to say. You look at uh, feeling younger, but then also wiser. Like the words you're saying, like probably people might, some people might, and I know I am, like you're like, wow, you know, I wasn't talking like you when I was 30. You wow. know, like, yeah. Thank you, that's cool. Me, that, that, like, I take that as confirmation it, on my path then. Ex absolutely. Like the amount of things that you've realized now in your 20s. You know, so many people, they might be getting close to their deathbed by the time they get the level of awareness of the, of the world that you have, Lee. Wow. And that, that's why I'm having you here to share this information because, um, you know, and we're not the only one, thankfully, we're not the only ones talking about this, but like surely there's not as many people that are in their 20s talking like you are. You know, yeah. they, usually they've gone through a hell of a lot more before they realize that they want to wake up. Wow. Wow. Right? Thank you. That's huge for me to hear on my path. Like, I, you know, I've... I've taken a lot of risks at a young age within myself, you know, and um, analytically to observe through that and learn lessons through that. And I think um, I just like the best advice I could give anybody in that is um, learn through every experience, you know, like, like we're here to, to, to screw up. We're here to make mistakes. We're here to fall off the horse and get back up. We're here right. to find out why we fell off that horse. And then, yeah. you know, I'm always doing my best to learn and refine. Yeah. Somebody brought up to me um, that we are always defining ourselves by what we do. And many of us are doing that. And, you know, I, I am this job or I am this business or I, I am this or, I, you know, whatever characteristic, personality, trait, whatever we want to call ourselves, I am this. And we're always defining ourselves when, in fact, we're actually refining ourselves. Like, we're always altering, you know. Becoming who we are. And actually separating yourself from the behavior is also a healthy thing to do because then you know, oh, that's a behavior I can choose or I can get another one. So for instance, like let's take it to something that's that's not a good thing, like an alcoholic or a smoker. Like there, look at, I've combined them. I said, oh, you're you're a smoker. No, you're not. You're a human that smokes. I remember Two you... different things, right? Because now I can separate you from that behavior, which is huge for our life, right? Like, so if you're saying I'm a workaholic or, you know, I have to work all the time or I'm late, things like that, like you're even putting that into your identity. So like I even started saying, like I would say, oh, I'm late, I'm late. I would keep saying that. And guess what I was? Late. You were late. I was always late. And then when I said, you know what, I'm not going to say that in my vocabulary. So it's two things. It's separating the behavior and it's actually changing your vocabulary. But you know, it's so true. Like I'll look in the mirror and look into my own eyes and say, I love you. Like, I love you 100%. And it's easier to look in your eyes when I'm able to look in my own eyes, you know. And um, so I, true. since I started practicing looking in my own eyes, I notice when people aren't. And I notice when they actually look away. And one of the most powerful things we can do is look into each other's eyes. Because Absolutely. it's one thing that stays the same, first of all. Like, physically, I've changed my whole life, you know. And these things have pretty much been the same. It's, it's the soul. Right. And that's why I think, you know, you look at the word improvement or being better, um, Sometimes that has, that has a, uh, uh, you know, it's kind of almost saying that something might be wrong now. Like, oh, then what's wrong with me now if I have to be better? Um, and you know what I've found is that it's not that we're just striving to be better. It's that we're peeling back all this other stuff so that the true person can be revealed. You, yeah. Right? Like, you know, I've, okay, I'm in the jungle and I'm showing somebody. I was asking somebody to help me um, rake the leaves in the path. And, you know, and I know it looks good. I know the lee it looks good with the leaves. And this is where, like, because it doesn't look bad. So I'll show them and be like, look at this. I was like, it doesn't look bad. It looks pretty good. 
And then I've already raked another path and then I'll show them that path. I'm like, it looks immaculate now. You know, it's, we can always improve. We can always improve beauty. Perfection can get better. You know, like everything can just get better. And when we define something as good or bad, I mean, we're limiting that too, you know? We're just improving. Yeah, and what is it too, right? Like it's just a different look that might be better. Like even look at it in humans, we have like, you know, uh, different time periods, different things were uh, acceptable. Like, uh, you know, you have the whole rage of, uh, so society puts different thoughts on what looks good or what the perception are. So our community, like where you are, uh, makes us think differently about things. That was an interesting one to step through. Um, I was reflecting on, um, like meditating from a city boy's perspective. And I was just reflecting on that because I'm, you know, growing up in the city suburbs, you know, you grew up the same way. And, um, I realized like, um, when I meditate, I'm stepping into myself and cause I'm, you made me think of this cause we were just talking about the distractions out there and um, like how society puts all these impositions, whether conscious of it or not, whether it's direct or indirect, you know, there's advertisements, there's the smoking, the drinking, there's, there's the partying, there's the social conditioning that we're just succumbed to. Yeah. And um, meditation really helps me because I'm tuning into Lee and I'm not succumbing to anything out there because well, I see it, but I'm, I'm more connected to myself. When I'm not meditating every day, I'm more focused out there. And there's so much out there that can distract us, whether it be the billboards. And sorry, I'm going to break off on another tangent, but billboards, spiritual billboards I started at my house. And um, what I would do is I would write on the wall, like, love yourself 100%. I love you. You are amazing. You are wonderful. You are awesome. And I wouldn't even consciously notice these things. And I realized like, this is what billboards and this is what advertising is. There's subliminal messages just happening anyways. Because they're in your environment. So I started setting up my own and I call them spiritual billboards and they work. Like I I walk by it. Maybe I don't look and go, oh, look, that's, I love you 100%, but I'm walking by and it's coming in. It's coming (laughs) in my peripherals. And so I just started taking back my power. Right. (laughs) It's so beautiful, brother. All these things that were, these little nuggets right here, they're so simple yet so profound. Like, you know, it's the simple shifts that make the biggest differences. Back to the simplicities within life's complexities. It's, it, it makes, it makes, it makes all the difference. So I'm curious, um, with the short time that we have today, if, if you were to meet someone and I know it's probably different, you're like a lot like me, when you're looking at someone, you actually see what the, what might be needed for that individual. But on a broad sense, if you could give someone one nugget of advice, What's the one thing that you think can help people to move their mindset um, in, into the direction that they want? What would be the one thing of awareness that you would want them to know? Practice self-love, self-acceptance. I mean, we all are going to make mistakes. I make them daily. I, I make mistakes daily. And the hardest thing is when I make mistakes, I used to identify myself with those mistakes and I'd fall into ruts about those mistakes when really I'm just learning. We're all just learning. The more I love and accept myself for learning, the more I'm able to look at myself and expand with that. The only reason I have any level of awareness right now is because I've made so many mistakes and I've been able to look at myself and step through them because it's so hard to take a look because our egos are so big within that. I have to be this person. I have to be that person. Failure is bad, but when failure is just feedback, failure is just feedback. That's a great way to put it. Like it's calibrating. Oh, that didn't work. So let's do it again. And, and you know, that's why I do my best to love people and accept them as they are, because the more somebody feels accepted, they feel more relaxed. Like if I'm, if I'm constantly making mistakes and I'm afraid that you're going to judge me, I'm tense. I'm tense. I'm tight. When I'm relaxed, I, I'm making sharper decisions. Right. I'm thinking more impeccably. Everything is easier because I'm calm. I can make accurate decisions. When I'm tense, I want to please you. And, and I, I don't know what it's going to take to please you. Actually, I, I have no control over how you think or view me. Yeah. So how can I worry about that? And the only reason I, I say all this is because so many of us get caught up in that, whether they're conscious of it or not. You know, I need to please my boss. I need to please my wife. I need to please my husband. I need to please my parents. I, I need to make sure my kids aren't, you know, upset. We're, we're always trying to please other people. And the more we take that in, and we really practice pleasing ourselves and loving ourselves, we're going to see that reflect because what's outside is in anyways. Right. 
So, Lee, I think you and I can just <laughs> talk for hours and oh, da- yeah. days, really. I mean, and, um, I, I, I just wanted to scratch the surface and hope that this sparks some attention into the way that we talk, the way that uh, we think in our mindset. And uh, Lee continually inspires me. Like, I'll see on social media some of the poems he has out. And I think you have your book with 65 poems, yeah. is it? Yeah. Um, it's uh, The Simple Way. The Simple Reminders That Life is a Gift. The simple reminders that life is a gift. It truly is. And I think um, these words that come to you share in just a different way. And, and different poems will relate to different parts of your life. And so, you know, just finding those things to inspire yourself. Yeah. It's like, it's like art in general. Like you look at a piece of art, a book, a poem. The words that you say um, can inspire us for another day, yeah. right? Um, and so, I, I I would definitely recommend checking it out. And uh, where can you find it? Uh, you can find it on Smashwords.com, or you can just Google "Simple Reminders That Life Is a Gift" by Lee Purcell. Um, let me share one with you, a quick one. Here. Sure. It's called Universal Guidance. Okay. Adjust or bust. Stay still and rust. Even when motionless change it still takes place it's abundant flow evolving this human race resistance implodes as the mind explodes explore all the roads this heart does not carry loads whether straight or narrow you know where you are it's your inner arrow always pointing to the stars so it always just brings me back home, you know, it brings me back to a state of peace, these poems. And they're simple, they're short, and they really help me alter my perception. And they bring me back to life's beauty, and they make me feel good. And other people who have read them feel the same way. That's a beautiful poem, man. I'm so, uh, it's, it's, and I know you have longer form poems, and they're different topics, and so many different things that can touch people. So it's, it's awesome to, to reflect, go check. And we want to hear more, like Lee and I are both, uh, active on our social media. So, you know, when you check out, uh, and thanks for watching this show, but let us know what questions you have. What things did we spark? Yeah. What did you like most? What was your favorite part? Um, sharing those things allows us to continue to do the, what we do to serve. And so we'll both pay attention as we watch this thread. So please do comment, uh, like the video if you, if you like it. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again. So until the next time you see the show, uh, keep being awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it is.